Hello, it's Jane. I'm back in the kitchen and today I'm going to show you my easy peasy lemon squeezy roasted tomato sauce. so easy peasy I'll tell you what but the first thing I'm doing it <laughs> and anybody who knows about me in the kitchen knows that it's got to be fairly straightforward for me to do it and um, there's going to be no peeling there's going to be no de-seeding of the tomatoes it is just going to be basically preparing your tomatoes bunging them in oil having a bit of a mishmash mosh sticking them in the oven for a couple of hours and put them in the blender. There we are, that's the short version. <laughs> and if you want to go now, you can, because you know what I'm like, I'll carry on talking. Um, but yeah, what I've got in front of me here is a site that I am sure is very familiar to all you growers in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. And basically, it's a basket of tomatoes. Now, I must admit, they are one of my favourite things to grow and when they first start coming, I've said before, one of my favourite, favourite things in the world to eat. It's such a simple, well it's not even a recipe, a slice of bread, preferably sourdough, a slice of tomato, a little drizzle of olive oil, a bit of cheese, put it under the grill, oh, maybe some black pepper if you're feeling fancy. Oh, it's just beautiful but let's face it at this stage in the season and we're in mid-august now we're probably all looking for other ways to use them so <laughs> what better than to prepare them so that we can enjoy the freshness and the beauty and the gorgeousness of the flavors right the way through the winter months she says fingers crossed touching all wood okay let me just talk quickly about the salted tomatoes i'm using I made a conscious decision last year to grow beefsteak, plum tomatoes, tomatoes that are that hold up particularly well with cooking over the, well, for example, the cherry tomatoes. And the reason for that is, just as I say, the reason they hold up better in cooking is they have a much thicker flesh inside and far fewer seeds. And one of the reasons I came to that decision was last year I just got so disheartened by taking forever to prepare all my tomatoes, which are such and they weren't gardener's delight. There were a few Amish pastes which were great, but there were um, sun gold and medium to small sized tomatoes. So for example, tomatoes like that. Let me show you the difference. Okay, imagine how many of those it's going to take to make a, a, a jar of sauce compared to, oh that one's slippy, compared to that one. I mean, it goes without saying, doesn't it? So yeah, so after, you know, what seemed like years, <laughs> pulling the little stalks off them and filling a baking tray with them, um, I decided I was gonna go for the big ones this year. So I have got a mixture of pink heart tomatoes, I think, can't quite remember. I know what these are, these are orange banana. And yes, I bought them because they had a funny name. Okay, got those, they're the smallest of these. Don't know what that one is. I'll come back to it. I have got these, all my labels got mixed up. I have got the names of them in my notebook, which is in my bag, which is in the shed, which is at the allotment. So I will be able to come back and maybe type them underneath. But uh, for now, I just know it's a very dark tomato. It's almost is it black tomato? Is it supposed to be on purple? I'm not sure. But they're there, they've done well. And then this one, I think that's the pink heart, that's heart shaped. Not quite sure what that is. That's a lot smaller, and I think that's a bloody butcher. Again, I just like the name. Um, so really, that's not perfect for cooking, but it's going in. So, let me show you what I do first. Move these to one side. Ta-da! I've got a dish in which I'm going to mix my oil. 
okay and all I need you can use any sort of oil if you've got sunflower oil if you've got rapeseed oil if you've got a different sort of oil you can do but you want some sort of fairly plain oil I've actually got extra virgin olive oil here but to be honest it's the only one we had in how first old is that right you need about a cup I haven't got a cup I've just got my eyes so a bit more I'm going to put that in of course you can't see it can you because I haven't got um, a glass bowl <laughs> there we go you'll see the reason I want it in a big bowl in a minute okay I am then going to add my acid which is my balsamic vinegar just a splash I love balsamic vinegar and olive oil and you know sometimes if you go out to eat you get little little bowls of it don't you to dip your posh bread in it's cheap as chips isn't it really but you know people pay for it but that's what I like right so I have got olive oil and in it I don't know if you can see a splash of balsamic vinegar I'll show you again in a minute I have got oh it's bottoms come off get back in there um that much that much sugar and that is just to sweeten the or take a slight bit of acidity away from the tomatoes and then a little bit of salt and to be honest at this point you can just add anything if you've got um herbs you want to put in now's the time to put them in if you've got can you see that now can you see what i'm doing all i'm doing is stirring that round fascinating um, you've got herbs you want to put in, what else? Whatever else you want, you can put into flavour, it's like chilli powder. I don't know, you might like chilli tomato sauce. Right, let's do that. That is ready for its tomatoes. So, what I want to do now, to prepare my tomatoes, as I said, there is going to be no de-seeding, there is going to be no plunging and boiling water and then blanching them, because I am going to use the seeds and all in my paste, in my paste paste in my sauce. I forgot what I was making then. Uh, so, all the only preparation these need, I mean obviously they're clean, that bit at the top, your cool, you don't want to be cooking and eating that because however much that stays in the oven it's going to stay tough. So, take the tip of your knife and in a downward motion, take out what should really be, yeah, triangular shaped core. I've got little composty things there. And then, all I'm going to do, chop it in half, throw it in the oil. Oh, you can see what's coming now, can't you? And continue. So basically, you can use tomatoes that are still slightly green. That doesn't matter. Um, if they have got any marks on, if I show you, there was one here, it's quite badly marked. See? You can use that all you're going to do is just cut that bit out because i know quite a lot of people who will just see the mark on a tomato and go oh no i'm not eating that it looks horrible and it might look horrible but it'll taste delicious we've just got to <laughs> take the stalks off take the corky bit out if i just show you if i leave the cork in you can see that is really really woody there so it's going to be tricky to do now, I've chopped it. Watch your fingers at all times. That's it. Get rid of your bits. In it goes. So also, if you've got a tomato that's just starting to get blighted, and let's face it, we've had such um, damp, humid weather in the UK recently, that blight, if you haven't got it now, it's probably on the way. Um, so yeah, again, another good way of eating them up. What I've got here, and you can see how green that is on the top, doesn't matter, it's going to get cooked. I don't know if you can say, see, there's a hole, there's a hole in the tomato. Can you see at the top there? And that could be caused by the tomato caterpillar. I'm not sure of its exact name, but basically, these, I, I only found out about these this year since the polytunnel. These little nocturnal caterpillars come down, come down your tomato plant at night while you're not there and burrow into your plant. And then come the daylight hours, they scurry back up the stem 
and hide underneath the leaves. And blow me, I've had quite a few tomatoes with these holes in. I can't find the caterpillars for the life of me. So if you know what they're called and you know how to deal with them, do let me know. But all that means is as you chop your tomato, like when you're preparing any food from the allotment, those colours are beautiful. The contrast between the green and red there, absolutely gorgeous. Um, you just have to keep an eye on it. To be honest, this looks a bit ropey at the bottom. But I've got to say, where's the hole? The hole's in that side. Gone. Nothing. Nothing untoward. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> it's it's going to get cooked. Um, yeah, and just carry on. If you wanted to, you could keep your tomatoes separate. I mean, this one's so ripe, this. Oh my goodness. Smell is beautiful. You could keep your tomato colours separate, so you could keep all your yellow tomatoes together, all your um, black tomatoes, all your red tomatoes, and experiment and just have fun with all the different sauces. So you'd have all different colours, and that'd be quite nice actually if you wanted to give Christmas presents, just jars of different colour sauce. That'd be great. But yeah, I'm gonna just do a couple more. Okay, I'm just going to do this one more and then before we put these in the oven I'll show you a little extra trick to get rid of a bit more of your glut. Right, what I've got here is the large tray out the oven filled with parchment paper. Now, there's several ways of roasting your tomatoes. There is just put them on your parchment paper or put them on um, an oil tray, do it that way, drizzle oil over the top. I'm not going to do that, I'm doing it this way. I've got my parchment paper and to pad my sauce out of it, what else have we got a glut of at the moment? Oh yes, <laughs> the good old courgette. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I'm not going to cover this in oil, I am going to just make a trivet out of my courgette to sit my tomato pieces on the top off. So not only will this hold down my thing, I'm not going to cover them in oil, they will do just like that. So I've got another one here, use the slightly big one. And basically you can use up whatever you want. If you've got a load of peppers you want to use up, uh, what else? What else? I don't know if cucumber would work. You could try it. Um, but I'm going to use these and I'm also going to use for flavour. It's a bit big, isn't it? Let's give that a little chop. For flavour, I am going to also put in one of our onions. I'm saying one, it's half of one. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I've talked about how poor our onion harvest has been this year. And what that means is actually a lot of them haven't, um, if you look at this one, I mean, this is a tiny one. I don't know if you can see from that. The skin is terrible. It's cracked, not just on the outside, but it seems to have gone all the way through. So we're not gonna be able to keep those over the winter. I'm sorry, I've suddenly got the urge to scratch my face, which isn't the best thing when you've got onion on it. Um, so we're going to try and use those up as quickly as possible. So, here we go. Let's put a bit of onion in there as well. You don't have to do this. You can skip this step completely. I'm not going to bother with that just now. Um, because the idea is if you've got a basic tomato sauce, you can add anything to it afterwards, can't you? And this is supposed to be just a basic sauce, but I'm getting a bit fancy. Um, garlic, the same. I'm not going to chop it. This is our garlic again. We didn't want, well, we didn't have too much this year. I'm just going to put those cloves in whole. And the last thing that I can put in if I wanted to would be some chilies. I'm actually not going to put those in because I want it to be more, I don't know, more of a I was going to say indiscreet sauce. 
Where do I think now? Everyday sauce. I don't want it to be particularly chilli-ish. I love garlic. I would put garlic in it anyway, whether I was making a chilli or not. So the chilli is going in. The onion just provides a base. Um, well, taste-wise and literally in this case as well, because it's part of the little trivet. And yeah, you've got to think, these are all just going to get blended in at the end. The fact they're going to be covered in your tomatoes means that they're not going to burn. Okay, are we ready? I've got a whole load of tomatoes in there. This is why I needed a big bowl. I've got all my oil, but oh dear, the oil's all at the bottom. How are we going to get it to mix in? We could use a spoon. We're not going to. We're going to use our hands. Okay, so you'll either love this bit or hate it. I've got to say, I quite like it. One distributing your oil so I think we can say now the oil is well distributed it smells fantastic by the way let me just move these I'm gonna to have to dry my hands a little bit aren't I oh come here there we go right once you've gone mish mush mush um, as I say you can put what you want on that tray this is just what I'm using up because I've got courgettes because I've got garlic and onion I'm using them and all you're doing is placing those if I show you can you see there oh you can't see can you be handy if you could. right I'm gonna put that on a tilt a bit like that there you should be able to see now okay all I'm gonna do is place these on and around my little trivet okay and the idea is the courgette oh, <laughs> The courgette and the onions will cook gently in the juices and in the oil without burning and the tomatoes will just roast ever so slowly, you want to try and get them seed side up, ever so slowly and ever so beautifully in that balsamic -y, vinegary oil and you know what I'm gonna to have to do some more now so I'm gonna to have to come back to I might wash my hands is it worth it but I'll come back to you when I've got the rest done and there we have two trays of delicious tomato -y goodness now these are going to go in my oven now which is on 150 degrees centigrade which I think is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit I'm going to check them after an hour and also at that time I'm going to swap them round in the oven so the one at the bottom will go at the top the one at the top will go to the bottom just to check they get as even a cooking as they possibly can and then after about another half hour so an hour and a half in total I'll just take a little look I'm expecting them to shrink a bit because of the water content I'm also wanting them to brown a tiny bit just so we can get some of that caramelised flavour into our sauce. So if after an hour and a half we need a little bit longer, I'll turn the oven up to about 400, so what's that, 180, round about, and uh, just leave them for another 10, 15 minutes. But I'll come back to you when they're out of the oven and nice and cool. Okay, let me show you what they've turned into. They are beautiful. They have just started to brown a little bit. And uh, the smell in the kitchen is absolutely gorgeous. So, what do we do now? I've got two big trays of them, as you saw, and the fun stones, because now I'm gonna have to try and get all that into this, which I've never used before, it's brand new. Um, I did plug it in before and have a little go and it seemed to work, so fingers crossed. Um, yeah, and that's it. What I want to do, I am going to blitz it in batches and then I'm going to mix the whole load. I'll put each batch I'll put in there, then mix the whole load together so that you're not going to be at risk of having a really lumpy 
batch to begin with and quite a liquidy one at the end so give them a good mix first but yeah right how am I going to get them into that? I haven't thought this through as ever what sort of utensil should we use or should we just go for it maybe a fish slice here we go right okay okie dokie of course underneath that top layer you've also got your courgette do you remember and bits of onion oh, onion did have bits of onion and bits of garlic in there so they are all going to get mixed in together and all of this beautiful oil is now infused with the flavors so that will be going in as well so i think what i'll do this is going to be fun you know excited about using the uh, blender yeah, it's like it's like a new toy um, but oh goodness this just smells so good right okay do we think that's enough no we can get more in there surely we can I'm hoping it's not just going to blend down to one batch which would be very annoying it actually took in the oven it took longer than I thought it was about two and a half hours in all and I put that down to the fact that there were um, two lots doing at the same time because if you've got more than one thing in the oven I don't know it seems to um, what am I saying again it seems to dilute <laughs> that will do dilute the overall power I think I'm going to get all this in do you think I'm going too far Shall I try it? I'm going to try and do the whole lot. Right, okay, because that would be good. That would be a good thing. And then I wouldn't have to mix it at the end in that bowl, which is another mess, isn't it, really? And after all, as I said with this, oopsie, clean hands. As I did say with this, it is a simple, simple, simple pimple recipe. So, right, okay, I really probably have come too much. I hope this machine is good. Right, okay. I am now going to attempt on camera da, 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 to pour in some of this lovely oil and hopefully oh, it's working and you'll see how much has gone in there and that look at that I've got all that tray in there in one go now oh, I just thought of something okay let's put that out of the way I'm good, bye handy tea towel. I've got a handy pair of oven gloves that I'll have to do. Right, okay, this is the fun bit. I keep saying that, don't I? I'm trying to convince myself. I've got to try and get that log, log that lid, to lock. There. That's got to lock, like that. And then this has got to lock in the lid. So the joy of having new technology. Now, when I practiced this before, it clicked in straight away. So why isn't it doing it, Jane? Did that work? That sounded like a click. Right, we'll find out when I press this button. Okay, and the magic will all happen in here. Well, that was easier than expected. Oh, hey, that's looking really good. Right, I'm not going to blitz it too much because I don't really want a soup. I want more of a chunky sauce, so... Let's have a look. I'm going to bring it around. Oh, 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 look at this. Okay, I'm going to show you. Can you see that now? That is beautiful. Oh, I'm sniffing it. I keep sniffing my food. I probably shouldn't. I certainly won't in public. But let's have a little look at the texture or the consistency. <laughs> it's got a lovely ploppy consistency. Okay. You know what? I'm absolutely thrilled with that because that now means I can do all this in one go. If only this had, if you're watching Morphe Richards, um, if you had a little spout on, 
that would make my life much easier. Right, there are several ways of freezing your products. Oh, that's dirty. Um, several ways of freezing your products, many of which are probably better than the way that I usually do mine, but very often I will use uh, those little, someone tries this, those little boxes. In fact, let me show you. Oh, these ones. Okay, and you can see I've used them over and over again. But if you are someone who has lots of little plastic boxes like these, you will know how often you lose the lids. And in fact, I've lost all but about two or three lids of those. So I can't use those anymore. So I'm going to attempt to get this lovely lid out into a one litre bag by the means of, if I hold it up like that, a jam funnel, right? Okay, I'm not saying this will work. As I say, when I've done it before, when I've frozen things in bags, I've used a bag with a far wider neck, but I've run out of those again. So what I'm going to try to do is, in fact, can I take that out? No, I better leave that in. Is hopefully this should be fairly straightforward. Like I say, they're one litre, so I'm wondering. I don't know how many you get in, you know, when you buy a jar of pasta sauce. I'm not quite sure how much you get. So I reckon three ladlefuls. Let's see what that looks like. There. Right, yeah, I can do with another one in there. Okay. And yeah, that makes sense because that'll each ladle full, would you say, is a portion? I don't know, but four ladlefuls in there seems enough for me. It's not going in now, look. To do. Oh, come on, I don't want you spilling out the top. What do you think? Oh, perfect. I've got a dirty middle as well as a dirty corner now. Right, okay. That is worked. That has got a double seal on. What you want to do before you get to, to the very end, I've got a messy worktop now, I do apologise. Before you get to the very end, try and get as much of the air out as you can. And I'll tell you why in a minute. You can either just do it like that, make sure it's sealed all the way along before the next bit, or you could even use a straw and suck out the excess air, which is a bit of a faff. But I think that is okay. Now, the reason we need to make sure that is absolutely sealed across is because it is going to get frozen like that in the freezer. I will put it in the quick freeze. I've got a quick freeze bit at the top of the freezer. I'll put it in there straight away. And then, touch wood, it will last me right through the winter. Well, not that packet, but you know, <laughs> I'll certainly have quite a few to... Um, yeah, to be getting on with. So I'll come back and we'll see how many packets I've done. And there they are. Seven bags of beautiful homegrown tomato sauce bagged, ready to freeze and ready to see us through the winter. I've got to say, if we can get that amount again, I'll be really, really pleased. And of course, in the pan, We've even got a little bit left over for tea. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you do with your tomatoes. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon. Bye.